Hey, what's up guys? It's Arnek and welcome to this week's video. Feels like ages since I've been here. I know it's only been two weeks, but I'm really happy to be back with another video. And in this week, we are talking about a little swipe transition that is quite a neat technique for you to add to your toolbox. I myself used this one in a recent client project. Well, unfortunately, it could not be approved since the technicalities for their live stream did not allow for it. But maybe you'll have more luck with your project. Because if used in the right way, it's a quick little nice transition that is just not used as often. So without any further ado, let's get it on. Welcome to our beloved After Effects interface. What we have here today is just two scenes following one another. And as it is now, there's just a harsh cut in between. So let's make it a little more playful. A good thing to start with is to come up with your color palette to work with, as I have already done over here. The next thing we need is a simple path that goes along the way across your screen. So choose the pen tool by clicking up here or hit G on your keyboard. You can either make it straight after placing the first point, move the cursor to the other side, hold down shift and click somewhere here to place the second point in a perfectly straight line. Personally, I would prefer to bend the path just a little to make it more organic. So I'm gonna move the left point down a little, switch back to the pen tool and now hold down Alt or Option to use the Convert Vertex tool on this point and drag it out quite a bit to create a nice curve across the screen. If it is not already, display the shapes Fill and Activate a Stroke with your color of choice. I will pick my turquoise accent color over here and crank up the stroke width all the way until the whole screen is filled up. Dive into the shape layer settings until you find the taper and wave dropdowns, which hide inside the layer stroke settings. The exact settings don't really matter too much, just go for something you like and which fits your scene best. So mine will be something like 50% end length and ease about 10, maybe 15% wave around say 20 ish and wave length somewhere in the realm of 400s as i said it doesn't really matter what the exact numbers are next let's add a swipe animation itself to achieve this you can either keyframe the path itself and move it around or which i personally like more add a trim paths effect and animate the end value from 0 to 100% on top of that, you also want to animate the taper and or wave settings. Do not leave them be static throughout this transition. Do so, for example, by adding a time expression onto wave phase. So you know the drill. Alt option click the stopwatch and type in time times 30, 40, 50 or whatever you feel like. The other thing I'd recommend to animate is the end length. I have started at around 50% and then slowly reduce it towards the end of the animation. Once you're happy with how it looks, duplicate the stroke layer with controller command D and alter the value slightly so there is another instance of the same wave. However, I would recommend to not move the keyframes around, as that may result in strange behaviors. Just make sure that this second instance is slightly narrower than the first one. And from here, you can add as many waves as you like, or just leave it at one or two, whatever suits you best. In the end, you want your last shape to act as a mask for everything that is following behind the cut. To achieve this reveal effect on the second scene, simply put it on top of the shape layers, add the effect set mat, and in the effect controls under take mat from layer, you want to select, well you probably guessed it, your last shape layer. And this is your transition done. If you now want to add more style to it, here is a tip to add more texture. You can go really sophisticated with textured animations, but let's be honest here. Transitions like these are visible for what, 12, maybe 20 frames at most? So no need to go super creative here. Simply duplicate one of the middle waves 
add a Gaussian blur of about 50 to maybe 100. But this also depends on the distance between your individual waves. And change the color to something a little darker, which seems more like a shade of the original color. Move this layer underneath and change the mode from normal to dissolve. If you find the layer spilling outside of the base wave, simply add another set matte effect here and choose the first wave as the reference layer. And this just adds that little extra to this whole thing. Well, and there you have it. Especially those small additions in the end really make this into a technique that you should implement into your toolbox. Also, check out either of these videos as they might just be the right fit for you. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe if you aren't already, and ring that bell for a new video every week. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!